Hello and welcome to yet another exciting show of The Ladies Club. So good to be in your company once again. I'm really excited for this show because it's something that I feel I grew up with and that is disability sport to take center stage. And we're going to start off with a quote from no one other than Natalie Detoy, multiple Paralympic medalist. Uh, she said, it does not matter if you look different, you are still the same as everybody else because you have the same dream. Of course, an incredibly talented swimmer at her debut Paralympic Games came home with five gold medals and a silver medal. Uh, she managed to win so many more before she retired from the Paralympic Games in London 2012. And then, of course, she also was uh, one of just two athletes with a physical disability to go not only to the Paralympic Games in Beijing 2008 but also to the Olympic Games. She has broken down so many barriers and I think when you speak about disability sport, Natalie Detoy is one of those role models and she's a trailblazer that managed to bring disability sport into mainstream consciousness and she really does kickstart our show focusing in on disability sport off to a really great start. You can get involved in the conversation so easy on social media. We're on Facebook, SABC Sports. On Twitter, it's at sports at SABC. At Bail and Cody, you can tweet me too. Please use our hashtag, hashtag the ladies club. Our guest, our game changer for today. She's also on social media, on Instagram and on Twitter. And if you want to follow her, Khotatsa Munchane. She is South Africa's leading women's wheelchair tennis player and has been world number one for over a decade now. Welcome into the Ladies Club Lounge. Yeah, thank you for having me here. And uh, yeah, thank you to the viewers for joining us today. It's so good to be able to speak to you, uh, KG, because uh, you certainly are a trailblazer when it comes to wheelchair tennis here in South Africa. But how did you get involved in the sport? It's been a great journey and it's still, uh, still a good journey for me. I mean, it's, uh, it's funny how I got into the sport because when it was introduced in, uh, in 2000 at my school, in Helena France Special School, I wasn't interested. But uh, yeah, one of my teachers forced me into the sport, you know, because I was an active learner at school. So yeah, that's how it started. I was forced and I tried it out. And you know what? I was one of the juniors to represent the country, my school and all that. And yeah, that's where it all started. But at the beginning for me, it was just uh, one of those things I could use to travel the world, you know? <laughs> so, but yeah, it turned out to be, to be amazing because today it's, it's my career. Sitting here now, imagine what your life would have been if you weren't forced to do sport. Maybe I could have been in IT because uh, you know, I like computers a lot. But uh, yes, I, I think where I am right now, I, I'm happy because I'm doing something that I actually love. I always loved sport when I was at school always loved sport when I was young. So yeah, it's something that I love and I enjoy doing it. So I just even, I don't even want to imagine life out of this <laughs> because yeah, it's something that I feel good about. What is it specifically though about the game of tennis that really speaks to you? The challenge itself, you know, tennis is a, it's a very challenging sport, you know, other than being on court and facing all those challenges. I mean, even in life, you know, for you to get on tour, you need, you need money. Where are you going to get money? So you deal with all these challenges. And I think that's what I like about it. Because when you go through all those challenges and you are able to bounce out of them, I mean, they, they, they help you grow as a person. So I think that's one thing that I love the most about the sport because it helped me grow a lot as a person. Looking at, I went to boarding school at a very young age and everything was done for me. And now I had to deal with all these that are Never thought I could. So I like the challenge I get in tennis and yeah. Your foot was amputated when you were 12 years old. You were born with congenial deformities and that foot that was amputated as well as it in your hands. Was your family very supportive of sport? You know, honestly, I, I don't think my family, they even knew that I was, I was talented in sport because I think they made the best decision to take me to a special school. For them, putting me in that environment, I think it helped me a lot because it exposed me to a lot of stuff that I didn't know. I grew up in the rural areas. I only knew soccer because it was played in the street. Tennis, athletics, I didn't know all that. So they didn't know until I was in grade six when I told them, I'm not coming home, I'm going to the competitions. Then they were like, what is it that you're doing because you're no longer coming home? I'm like, I'm playing sport. They couldn't believe me until I brought medals at home. So that's when they realized that, oh, this kid loves these things. And yeah, they supported me from then. And yeah, 
tennis, it wasn't even in my mind back then. But yeah, when I joined tennis, I mean, they were so proud of me because that's when they could see me on TV. And, you know, that's when my mom tapped herself and like, oh, the star was born. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's it's just incredible because we've heard it before that sports has the power to change the world, but it's changed the course of your life in the most incredible way. We'll speak about some of your achievements because KG is a three-time Paralympian and she travels the world now playing the sport that she loves. Get involved in the conversation so easy on social media. Hashtag the ladies Kabul. We'll be speaking to Khotatsu Monchane on the show when we return. Welcome back. Thank you very much for staying with the Ladies Club. Is that part of the show where we get to know our game changer, Khotatsu Monjane, a little bit better? She's currently ranked sixth in the world when it comes to women's singles. And uh, last year, she had her best year ever. Her career high is five. So she's very close uh, to a career high that she reached back in 2013. So a little bit of what happened in 2017. She made the Super Series of the British Open, uh, which is a Super Series event. She made the doubles final. She won the Swiss Open, which is an ITF Series 1 event, singles title, and lost in the doubles final. Won both titles at the Busan Open and at the Joburg Open. Made the final in the singles in the first event of the year in 2017, which was the Northwest Challenge in the UK. So it was an amazing 2017. And just when people were thinking that you were slowing down, KG said, no, I am not slowing down. You haven't seen the best of me. Last year, honestly, it was, it was my best year. And uh, yeah, I know people would say I was slowing down, but you know, matter of the fact is, I, I don't have a, a background of tennis. You know, if I tell you when I started playing tennis, how I, I was playing, you won't believe it because I just picked up the racket. And I was playing forehand with my left hand, playing double backhand, serving with my right hand. So I was playing this sport how I think it's, it's possible. I, I didn't start playing tennis at the age of six or five and all that. So I played when I, when I was 19. So you can imagine. And I picked up so early in my career. And I don't know what I was doing because I was just whipping the ball around the court. But as you progress, top five, grand slams, you're playing in a bigger stage and you need experience, you, you need to be at your A level, of which I think I had my A game, but I didn't know anything. I didn't know what does playing in a Grand Slam means back then. So that's why it took a toll when I dropped out of the top eight. I mean, that's when I knew that I need a psychologist. I need to work with the physio regularly to keep the body fit and all that. I need to eat well, I need to follow a certain training program, of which in the past, I mean, I just spent more than two hours on court just hitting the ball. I mean, I didn't know, but as I progressed as a player, all those things came into place and I had to start all over again. And after doing that, here I am playing good again and back into the top six. And it's just, uh, yeah, you had to take baby steps when you fall off the top to get back. It's always looked as if you've been at the top. You know, you've been winning accolades across South Africa. A two-time South African Women Sports Person of the Year with a disability. Three times Gauteng uh, Sports Person of the Year with a disability. So uh, you've been doing well. But do you think that you, there just needed to be a little bit of a shift? It was a must that uh, there should be that shift, you know, because some way along the way I had, to, I had to take baby steps. I had to go back. You know, I had, to, I had to go back to the basics because all it was, it was upon the talent. And once you get to the top, talent is still good, but it's a curse because you need to follow certain rules. You need to be disciplined. I can't just go on court and start hitting the ball facing there like I, I did when I was down there. I mean, you need to be more disciplined. You need to be more accurate. You need to be more consistent. So. Those are all the factors that comes when you get to be a top player. And for me, I was just relying on my talent. I was just playing however I feel like, you know, I would do all this fancy stuff. But when you're on the top, you don't have to be fancy. If you're in, in it to win it, you need to be disciplined. You need to do the right stuff. It sounds to me as if you, there's, there's a new spark that's been lit in you for wheelchair <laughs> tennis. 
Of course, I mean, of course, because uh, I mean, along my career, I had to make certain changes. You know, I had to get second opinions from different coaches, and yeah, I mean, when, when they speak a different language, that's when I realized that oh, so I spent most of my time doing things this way while I can do them this way. So it's uh, there's been a lot of changes, you know. Like I said, psychology is coming into place and all that. They they played a big role for me getting back to the top because. Before I would just tank or I'd just give. I was just like, why am I? Why do I keep missing the forehand? What am I doing here? Then, just like throw in the towel, then lose the match. But now I know you don't just throw the towel. You need to take it one point at a time. Fight for each point. Yeah, and when to fire up, when to you know just relax and go with the flow on court. So. Back then, I didn't know all those things. So taking those small steps to get to the top is the most difficult thing, in, I guess, in any sport. But in tennis, it's even worse, because you know I'm eight. Oh, I need 50 points to get to seven. But that 50 points to get to a ranking better than that, it's a lot. It's, it takes a lot. You've obviously had a lot of support along the way. Yeah, of course. Um, I did. I did. My team is, my team is really great. It's really great. I think they, what, the role they're playing in my life is just more than them offering me services, but making sure that I, I'm happy in my general life, which is good. I don't have to sit around and stress about, I don't have this, I don't have that, but you know, I have to think of the greatest things that I've achieved and what I can still achieve. You've been to three Paralympic Games, and as I said, you've got a lot of achievements. What is your top achievement? What is most special for KG? Beijing Paralympics is the best thing for me because considering that I never knew anything about Paralympics, I didn't know anything about tennis. And I didn't know being in Paralympics, it's every sport, men and women's dream, just to be there. But there I am, two and a half years of playing sport, boom, qualified. Getting to see people playing so well, I was like, when I come back, I want to play like that. Because it served as a, as a motivation. It sort of opened, you know, a way for me in tennis. Because I didn't know what I was doing. But after coming back there, and now when I hear how people struggle to qualify and all that, I was like, wow, I made it, <laughs> you know? I made it. So that story of qualifying for Beijing Paralympics, I still say is the best thing in my career. Because I, I knew nothing about tennis, I knew nothing about Paralympics, but there I was representing my country at a bigger stage. And I still pulled a good performance against top ranked players. I, I can't even remember where I was ranked back then, but I remember I played in front of 10,000 crowd. You know, it was, it was amazing because you don't get that right now. You don't get to play in such a big stadium. So I, I would say Beijing Paralympics that's the one for me. That's my best achievement. It's something to cherish. Yeah. But there's some unfinished business at the Paralympic Games, isn't there? Of course, of course. At the Paralympics, there's an unfinished business. I'm looking into Tokyo, and uh, I hope getting into Tokyo, I'll be healthy and fit, because that's what I, you know, I wish for. 2012, I was, I think I was there, but injuries. 20. 16, so many changes, changing the chairs, like making wrong decisions. So going into Tokyo with the team that I have right now, I think we're going to have something proper in place to go and chase for that medal. So yeah, it's, it's, an, it's an unfinished business for me. And yeah, not only Tokyo, but I still need to win a Grand Slam too. So <laughs> it's a long way to go. <laughs> And, and just a reminder that uh, Roger Federer, a 36 years old, became world number one. Again, the oldest man to get that world number one ranking. So at 31 years old, Roger Federer has got to be some inspiration for you, isn't it? Of course. I mean, it just shows that uh, age is just a number. It's just a number. When you're fit and healthy, I think in sport, it depends on your body, how your body pushes. Forget the age how your body pushes. I mean, I think for wheelchair tennis number three, there was like, she's like 44 years old. <laughs> so you can imagine, you can imagine. Roger just shows that if you're fit and you're healthy, you can, you can achieve more than that. Our conversation with our game changer, Khatata Majani, continues after the break.
Welcome back. Please join us on Facebook, Twitter. You can even email your comments. We'd love to hear what you have to say here on The Ladies Club. So easy. The hashtag is The Ladies Club. Khatatsu Mojani is our game changer today. So who is Khatatsu away from the tennis court? A very nice person, kind, <laughs> funny. <laughs> Yeah, no, those who know those who knows me or those who live with me or my closest friends, they know I'm a I'm a, I'm a person of humor, you know. I always make people laugh. Which I feel like the outside world they, that's not what they get, but it's a very friendly person, likes helping out people, likes encouraging people to, you know, do the best they can in life. That's uh, beyond disability. I engage myself with different people, not only people with disabilities. And I mean, my fellow people with disabilities, they know, like, I don't even take them serious because I know that they are able more than they think. So I, d I don't have time to feel pity for them and all that. They always say I'm, I'm, I'm hard on them because um, I have achieved them. I'm always like, no, you need to see yourself beyond your condition, you know, because that is just a condition and all that. So I try, I try to motivate people out there, you know. I, I, I tend to a lot of school kids, which is, that's what I like on my social media, like my Facebook is full of school kids who likes talking and, yeah, service, you know, their motivation and trying to be the best role model as I can. Just launched an uh, NGO, trying to give back to the community, you know, right. studying at my school where there's no sport facility, you know, even today. And that school produced two Paralympians. So that's my biggest uh, uh, task at the moment. I'm trying as hard as I could to go out there, get funding so that the school could at least have a sport facility. It doesn't have to be a tennis school. It can be soccer ground or a netball court or a basketball court at least something because that school it has produced a star today but it has nothing so that will be the first thing i want to pay forward yeah when i give back to the community and something that i'm working on at the moment there is no doubt that there are many children that come from the rural areas if they've got a physical disability. There are very real challenges for them. So you act as a motivation for them, showing them what they can achieve when they put their minds to it. But what do you tell them to overcome those challenges because they can't just pretend they're not there? For me, what I tell them is just you need to, you need to see yourself differently. Don't look at yourself as like you're in a wheelchair and you're stuck. Just imagine yourself out of the wheelchair. What is it that you could have been doing? Why can't you do it now? Don't tell me about working because working is not part of it. You know, some they wish to be doctors, some they wish to be teachers, which those are achievable dreams, you know. So for me, what I tell them is just that look at yourself beyond your condition, look at yourself beyond your disability. Forget about the disabled word because if you keep saying you're disabled, sometimes you, you don't even mean the dictionary term that it means to people with disabilities. You're just saying, I'm not able, I'm not able. So use more positive words so that you can feel positive about life because that's what I did. That's why today I couldn't talk to anyone about my disability without being ashamed or without them feeling sorry for me. Even when they feel sorry for me, I make them understand because I know a lot of my people with disabilities, when they share their stories and people are like, oh, sorry, they tend to zone into that. And after that, obviously, we'll be feeling like, oh, I'm really like this and all that. Of which, disability is just a condition. It's just an impairment. You can live beyond that impairment. So I encourage them to explore their abilities beyond their disabilities. I want to go back to how we began this segment of the show, and that was who's KG away from the tennis court. And you said she's a kind-hearted person and she likes to have fun. And uh, you're also very good friends with, with Casta Semenya. You and Popo girls like to hang out together. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can imagine. We're not at home. We're in Gauteng, you know. So you gotta, you got to stay close to... Those who you know, those who you trust. People out here, different people in Gauteng, there's a lot of different people, different cultures. So you got to stay close to those who you, you, you believe in, you know. Just, yeah. You don't want to you, you find yourself falling into the mouth of sharks and all that or getting lost in what, 
you know, you don't know what you're doing, actually. Like, you don't want to lose direction. But associating myself with people like Caster, she's a sport woman. She's achieved a lot. So you can imagine what she says to me. She's an encouragement. She's been through a lot. And her mental strength is amazing. So I wouldn't want to, you know, associate myself with someone that's going to get me to club every weekend. So we try to stay focused, stay in the focus lane as much as we could. But it doesn't mean we don't have fun. We do, but we're trying to be more focused, associate us with people that will benefit us and they will help us grow in future. Who has been a role model for you and who continues to be a role model for you? Well, my mom is my role model. You know, if I hear the stories of the past, like being born in the rural area, having a disability, a lot of kids, they were hidden, a lot of kids, they were abandoned. And here I am, my mom gave me a life. I mean, took a strength to put me out there so that people can see me. You know, people used to look at me. I didn't even know why, because I was a kid and all that. The courage she had to put me out here while other parents were hiding their kids, it's just something that I value a lot in her. So I just appreciate her for giving me the life I have today, because she was never ashamed of me. and. She keep, you know, acting as a role model and she keep guiding, guiding me even as an adult. So my mom is, I can't trade her, I can't trade her for anything. She, she's the best, she's the best. Even though she doesn't understand tennis, but she, yes, she, she, she tries so hard, keep praying. I'm like, mom, that will fold. Just keep praying and all that. And you know, my mom, yeah, my mom is my role model. She, she's my pillar of strength, I don't wanna lie. Do you remember the first match that you came to watch? We used to have tournaments in, in Pulugwani and there used to be a coach down in Pulugwani. So when I, when I was at University of Venda, we would go for a camp in Pulugwani City because I live in Sishiro. It's like seven kilometers away from Pulugwani. So she will come, she, my dad and my, my siblings, they will come and watch me practice, you know? I don't think they knew what was going on, but yes, they will come every weekend when I'm there. And when we had tournaments, they will also come and, you know, yeah, support me and all that. So I remember all that. I remember she didn't even know I was being called KG. I'm just like, why is that coach kept calling you KG? Like, that's the name I use because my name is so difficult <laughs> to pronounce. It's like, oh, okay. So yeah, I remember all that and I can't, I can't say I, I didn't cherish all those moments. Having my family beside the courts back then, yeah, it was, it was amazing. And they kept asking me, when are you coming back to play? I'm like, oh, we don't have a tournament anymore. What I wish right now is for them to see me play at this level. Because, yeah, yeah that's, that's why I feel like now I'm a professional. I understand the sport better. And if they see me hitting that ball hard, I'm sure, yeah, they will be like, wow. <laughs> Maybe the goal then, or the vision that we're putting out there, is for tennis courts to be built at your old primary school that produced two Paralympians, and you can go and play there with Evans on the court and show your family and the school just the star that you've become. Exactly. That, that will be a dream event to, 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 to put out there. I think that will be the, the best event in South Africa, you know? So corporate South Africa, get involved. You've heard it from Khatatu Majani. She's been South Africa's top women's wheelchair player for a number of years, over a decade, currently world number six. That's how we come to the end of today's Ladies Club show. Remember that greatness is never given, it's always earned. Until next week, Katie, thank you so much for being our game changer today. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you. Goodbye.